and now for a special Thursday edition of 10 Things. As Rachel Nichols reported, the NBA has no plans to televise the Ballyhood All-Star Draft or even release the draft order. This is dumb look, I get the fretting from players, the league office, and the players' union. Being publicly ranked is uncomfortable. No one wants to be last pick, even from a player pool that represents the best 5% of the world's best basketball league. But the NBA announced a bold move to juice up a dead exhibition, and they basked in the tittering buzz that followed. Would players feel obligated to pick their teammates? How aggressively would Clay Thompson guard Stephen Curry? How would the captains, presumably including LeBron, the premier NBA historian among active players, sort the league's superstar hierarchy? Fans salivated over the drama, and the NBA welcomed their salivating. The idea worked. You cannot congratulate yourself on that reception and then walk away from everything behind it a few months later over some vague concern from unnamed players, or their representatives, about ego bruising. The NBA conceived the draft precisely to create these dramas. They are the entire purpose of it. If you aren't going to release the draft order, or televise the selections, there is almost no point to the draft, aside from the possibility of teammates facing each other. Also, it will leak anyway. The NBA could change course between now and the draft date. This also could be a one-year soft phase in, an attempt to ease players into the concept before going full tilt. There are even wishy-washy workarounds. Perhaps each captain could make eight picks apiece, leaving six unpicked guys the league would then randomly assign, so that no one suffers the indignity of being last pick. A more extreme step, prohibit captains from selecting teammates, just as the league's 30 head coaches are banned from voting for their own players when they pick reserves. I don't like that idea, again, it undercuts the whole idea of the draft, but if it nudges stakeholders in the right direction, maybe it could be useful this one time. Long term, either make this a thing or scrap it. Nikola Mirotic and Bobby Portis are getting most of the pub for Chicago's 7-0 run, a delicious bit of organizational self-sabotage. They deserve it, also, David NWABA. Mirotic is on fire from all over the place, and Portis is playing the best all-around ball of his life. Someone apparently informed him that passing is legal. But don't overlook Dunn. Since mid-November, Dunn has averaged 15 points and 6 times per game, and hit 44% from deep. The numbers are good the process behind them has been even more encouraging. Dunn is launching with confidence when defenders give him the rondo treatment. He's getting better at leading his defenders into picks, a must-have bit of craft. He fakes away from screens with a cruel shoulder shimmy, gets his defender leaning that way, and then zooms back toward the pick, with his defender trailing, flat-footed, about to get slammed. Once he's established the threat of that crisscross, Dunn hits opponents with the opposite counter, feint toward screens, and then jet away from them.